Breaking news right now. Firefighters are trying to fan out the smoke from Terminal 2 at Lindbergh Field after something inside caught fire. It happened at Terminal 2 West. That's on McCain Street, right between Airport Terminal Road and Harbor Drive. Taking a live look outside the airport right now. Crews are trying to figure out what caught on fire. The terminal was not evacuated. However, firefighters say they have everything under control. Turning now to Democracy 2016, last night's Republican presidential debate got just a little awkward. At one point, nearly a dozen nearby homes were evacuated. Now look at this smartphone video. It shows the top floor of the building fully engulfed. No one was hurt, but the building is a total loss. It's unclear what caused the fire. Breaking news out of University City. A driver died after driving off a bridge on Genesee Avenue. It happened around 345 this morning near Decoro Street. And witnesses told police the car fell into the embankment. You'll be going as Dorothy Gale and I'll be the scarecrow, all right? Okay, okay. sounds good. Happening now, hundreds of athletes are warming up for the annual South Bay Sprint Triathlon and Kids Race. 10 News reporter Marie Cornell is live in Chula Vista where the sun is finally out and the racing is about to begin in about an hour. Right, Marie? Oh, that is just brutal to watch. Ben Carson was backstage too early and was stranded in no man's land when he didn't hear his name called. Before he could figure out what to do, Ted Cruz's name was called and then Donald Trump's. John Kasich, the last person to be called, never heard his name in the noise, leaving an empty podium for quite a while. Oh, that was just brutal. Awkwardness aside, the Republican candidates squared off just a few days from the New Hampshire primary. Donald Trump hopes to stay the frontrunner despite his upset loss in Iowa. Now, Scripps teamed up with PolitiFact to fact check what was said. We looked at one comment Donald Trump made on the Iraq war where he said, don't go, don't do it. You're going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, PolitiFact searched newspaper articles and television transcripts from 2002. Breaking news right now, a person was hit and killed by a train in Encinitas. It happened just before two this morning on the tracks between Highway 101 and Vulcan Avenue. According to witnesses, a man in his 40s was sitting on the rail of the tracks. Deputies say the train activated its emergency braking system but was unable to stop. Deputies are continuing to investigate and have not determined if this was in fact a suicide. Overnight, the U.S. carried out another airdrop of food and water for thousands of refugees trapped in the mountains of Iraq. Three planes dropped 72 bundles of supplies, which include more than 28,000 meals. These are pictures as crews prepared to load those planes. Yesterday, the U.S. announced two more airstrikes in northern Iraq against ISIS militants, which is systematically executing Iraqi Christians. It's being said the mission is to contain and not destroy ISIS. Welcome back. It's 853. We're covering breaking news out of Northern California. The USGS has just upgraded or I guess re-upgraded the earthquake to 6.1. Started as a 6.1. They ruled it as a 6.0 and they just moved it up to a 6.1 epicentered around the Napa uh, area in Northern California. Yes. Finally, the countdown is on to the big game. I cannot wait. Millions of football fans like myself are getting ready to host their friends to watch the Panthers take on the Broncos. ABC's Brandy Hitt is in Santa Clara with the latest on everything from security to the halftime show and, of course, the Super Bowl 50 commercials. Well, there's a job I want. Well, 10 News is looking ahead to some of the big stories happening this week in San Diego. On Monday, a teacher accused of preying on her young student in class and at home is expected to enter a plea. Police say Tony Sutton here of Crawford High School lured the boy, telling him she was in an abusive relationship and needed him. The boy's lawyer says that's a lie. The student is cooperating with the district attorney. Looking ahead to Tuesday, parents will talk with the Powell Unified School Board about transgender bathrooms on campus. This comes after parents found out a student who was born a girl was allowed to change in the boys locker room at Rancho Bernardo High School. The student identifies as a boy. And looking ahead to Thursday, the man accused of sexually abusing children will be in court. The LDS Church says it banned Frank Sellis from ever coming in contact with children. Agents arrested Sellis and Bonita last month, decades after he left Louisiana. He was the subject of an outstanding warrant for child sex abuse ever since. In the late 70s, he appeared on a TV show in Louisiana as a character, Mr. Wonderful. Well, a tax season scam costing Americans millions. The change that will make it even harder to tell con artists from the real thing. That sounds good. Sounds a lot better than ever having to get in the water this morning and then running after that. So I'll take the burgers. Yeah. You can do the running. How can we go to Las Vegas and be judges for that competition? Could you imagine the food we'd get to eat? Can we just go now? 
Okay, let's go. All right, let's go now, just right after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Some bad news as we head into grilling season. Beef prices are at their highest since 1987, and relief isn't likely anytime soon. A dwindling number of cattle and growing export demand from countries such as China and Japan have bumped up the average retail cost to $5.28 a pound in February. That's up almost a quarter from January. Well, it's military opening day at the Padres game today. A retired Marine with prosthetic legs who just finished a cross-country bike trip will throw out the first pitch. Rob Jones traveled across the country on his bicycle from Maine to Camp Pendleton. Cheers and hugs greeted him as he finished his journey. Jones says it was one of his goals after being injured during his 2010 deployment to Afghanistan. He was hit by an IED and had to have both his legs amputated. I feel great. Um... Good for him. Jones says the support from everyone along the way helped him keep him going. Today's game is at 110 against the Detroit Tigers. All right, I love this thing. The coolest cooler could become the most funded campaign on the Kickstarter website. The cooler is covered with gadgets like a blender and a cell phone charger. Ryan Grepper did redesigned the product after he missed his original funding goal. With 21 days left to go, his project already has more than $8 million in pledges and some 41,000 backers. Why not look at that thing? It's currently the third most funded campaign <laughs> on Kickstarter ever. Oh, look I would love to have one of those. Take it to the beach with me. Exactly. Well, Party. you got a little bit too much sun yourself. You need sunscreen. I've been scolded all morning by my friends here, Maria and our Ashley, for getting too much sun yesterday at the beach. Yep. Yeah, well, you have to be careful, Joe. If I had that cooler, I would have the sunblock in the cooler with my margaritas. Sure? Wildfires are scorching through western states this morning. The new efforts firefighters are making this morning to quell the flames. A local businessman gets death threats for taking in an undocumented immigrant family. That's not First Amendment protected speech, that's hate. The overwhelming amount of support he's now getting after 10 News first aired his story. Plus, a local woman is facing charges after the child she was watching was hit and killed. The claims the toddler's mother is now making about the babysitter. You're watching 10 News this morning. We'll be back in two minutes.